Hey everyone, when you think of the word feet and meter, you usually think of math and the standard units of measuring distance along with the metric units of measuring distance. Well, in the same way, when you're doing poetry, we use meter and feet interchangeably to measure the distance, how much phrasing, stress, and unstressed syllables when you're working with each line in a poem. So what I've done is drawn a little chart using snaps and claps for iambic metrical feet in poetry for monometer, dimeter, trimeter, tetrameter, pentameter, hexameter, heptameter, and octameters using shapes that your students are familiar with to help them understand if they end up getting a poem with that requires rhythm and meter and not just rhyming or free verse, they'll kind of know how to handle it and they'll be able to answer a question about what type of meter or feet are being used. Is it iambic or trochi or one of the others? So the one I'm gonna work on with you today along with one question from a poem of that type is the iambic. And so I will show you the sheet that I've done to help you uh, help your students differentiate between the different types. So when you're talking about metrical feet and poetry, iambic, I, as in iambic, is soft with a snap and loud with a clap. Yellow being soft, green being loud. And then as you see, at the end of each line, when you get each foot, each two feet, the red marks one line of unstressed and stressed syllables in the iambic format. So let's try a couple of these. One foot monometer is snap, clap, line monometer. Snap, clap, snap, clap, line, diameter. The red line is on the third foot for trimeter, triangle. Snap, clap, snap, clap, snap, clap, line. Repeat, trimeter. Fourth is on the fourth side in a square or a tetrameter. Snap, clap, snap, clap, snap, clap, snap, clap, line is soft and loud stress or iambic pentameter, which they say is one of the most popular ones. It's 10 syllables where the second one is the stress, the louder one each time. Snap, clap, snap, clap, snap three, snap four, snap five, line, pentameter, six feet, five feet, six feet, hexagon, hexameter, snap one, snap two, snap three, snap four, snap five, snap six, line, that's 12 syllables, six times two for each line of the poem, regardless of how many lines you have, or measures. Our last two, heptameter, 
the red line is not until the seventh side and a heptameter, snap one, snap two, snap three, snap four, snap five, snap six, snap seven, line, that would be 14 syllables, the second one of each being stressed. For trochi, it would just be reversed. It would be clap, snap, clap, two, clap, three, clap, four, clap, five, clap, six, clap, seven, line. And so it would be the first syllable being stressed in trochi. And we'll do the last one, octometer, eight feet, with the soft, loud stress. And the end of the line is the 16th syllable. Let's try that together. Snap one, snap two, snap three, snap four, snap five, snap six, snap seven, snap eight, line. And then you would continue that pattern, 16 syllables for each line with the second one being stressed. So I've gone ahead and done one poem for you in iambic trimeter in blank verse, which means it doesn't have to rhyme, but it has to follow the pattern of rhythm and meter. And so what I've done for you to make it easier to watch for the snap, the soft sound versus the clap, the loud sound. I've made every other syllable in bold so your kids can hear and see the pattern. If I just get one gift from Santa Claus this year, it's not what you might think. It won't come in a box. My room has lots of toys. The closet's full of clothes. And money cannot buy the one thing I desire. I hesitate to ask. There's nothing I can do to make this come to pass, it's for my mom and dad. Now, mom and dad, in this case, would be non-capitalized. So it's a teachable moment of instruction, a TMI. You only need to put capital mom and dad, and you would say, it's for mom and dad. But that would break the pattern of iambic tetrameter with trimeter with blank verse. So just make a teachable moment and tell your kids, do not put a capital on mom and dad because you're not calling them that. Measure uh, stanza one, two, three, stanza four. So you should probably mark them. So if there's any questions about one, or more, they're already marked with large numbers so that you don't get the stanza number confused with the line number, which is completely different. So stanza four, the gift is not for me, it's really more for them. So Santa just this time, please make this dream come true. The five. In case you did, didn't know, our home was full of love. Before past tense. With laughter, love, and hugs a long, long time ago. So apparently there's going to be a conflict or a transition. Uh, stanza six. But one day some thing change. I'm not sure what it was. My mom and dad got lost. They seemed to put up walls. Seven. They once used words to build. But now they're 
word destroy the heart wants full of love I just am default number eight the anger blame and fears are all I see each day and each night side blank pain is what prevents my sleep and stanza the socks the shoes that tie it all together so thank you santa claus i ask for nothing else just help my mom and dad to choose to love again so that's the poem that i wrote based on a little bit of personal experience and based on what many students deal with. So if we were to do one question after reading the poem, the question and the line or stanza that they're talking about. Question number seven is only asking about stanza one so that's the labeling that you would do in the underlining then we'll evaluate our strategies and execute a plan eliminate three wrong answers and explain why select one correct answer in the book and in the scantron so how are the speaker singular apostrophe as words and stanza one important to the conflict expressed in the poem conflict is something negative when a question like this one in the eighth grade test supporting which means it could be a seventh grade readiness and since the students left seven eighth grade not doing well with it this would be even a great question to practice with your ninth graders so if we look at stanza one, it shows that the Christmas gift the speaker wants is something that Santa cannot give. Well, if I'm asking Santa Claus for a gift, then from the speaker's point of view, we, he or she thinks that Santa can give the gift or he wouldn't be bothering to ask him for this gift. So that's why we would eliminate that because of one word. Santa can give this gift or else we think so or we wouldn't be asking him for it. It suggests that the gift the speaker would like can be purchased in a store. Well, it said that it cannot be bought. So that one word makes letter B not true. It shows that the speaker has unrealistic expectations about what Santa can provide. Since we cannot infer things that are not even there or mentioned, it wouldn't be a good idea to just assume that just based on our own point of view, uh, we can't ask Santa Claus for something like this. So it could be a question that could be true, but before we select it, we've got to compare it to the other remaining answer. It feels that whatever the gift is, is that the speaker wants will not be something you can buy. And that's almost exactly what they mentioned. It's not something that you can buy. It's something that they're hoping Santa can help with that can be a change of heart, a change of character or personality, either by his mom or dad, or perhaps both. So the best answer, after I've read in both places, underlined in both places, labeled in both places, eliminated three answers based on my referencing of what they were trying to say, would be letter D. So, sometimes you might get distracted by an answer that comes first yeah for people that don't believe in santa claus then there would be unrealistic expectations but
but it didn't say how are the readers, what is the reader's point of view in stanza one? It doesn't give the reader's point of view, it only gives the speaker's words in stanza one. So we're not allowed to put in our own thoughts, our own point of view or perspective. So when we read that stanza one once more time, one more time, if I just get one gift from Santa Claus this year, it's not what you might think. It won't come in a box. So the things that you get in a box are typically things that you cannot buy. And if you read a little bit further, money cannot buy the one thing I desire. So if you were to say, okay, this is the red light the question, then sometimes reading beyond the question, fast forwarding, you can not just have to infer what you can say is because it's not going to come in a box it won't be something that we're going to be able to buy so the answer based on the combination of stanza one and two is most likely letter d not something you're going to be able to buy because it's not going to come in a box so that's what iambic triter meter might look like. Blank verse meaning that it doesn't have to rhyme, but it does have to follow a pattern of meter and beat in terms of a, a rhythm or a pattern it just doesn't have to rhyme. Free verse, it wouldn't even need to re need the beats, the beat or the meter, so it wouldn't have any of these fancy uh, patterns to follow or the different amounts of syllables that are stressed or unstressed on each line. So that was one easy way that I think would help. If your kids cannot snap, you could do a pat on your leg, which is a soft, and then a clap, which would be the loud, to differentiate the instruction for the kids who just can't figure out how to snap. Or figure out some other creative way. Ask your kids, what's, what's another creative way that we can do a soft, loud, unstressed versus unstressed versus stressed uh, line based on iambic uh, metrical beat of iambic poetry. So share the video, tag your reading and writing teacher friends who are studying about meter and beat in poetry that needs rhythm and meter but not rhyme and hopefully you'll get a chance to practice i would recommend if you're going to try this after the test this week then work on the simple ones work on monometer where they just have to have two syllables ta 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 and after each second syllable there's a new line keep it simple before you try to get it more complex where they have to have you know two feet or three feet four or five or even more so that's just my suggestion uh, don't forget to like or share or tag the video i look forward to working with you teachers this summer remember that for every teacher who has no decision making with how money is spent i'm allowed to give you a hundred dollar finder's fee for passing my word on to your coordinators uh, for math and reading, writing, classroom management and motivation. And I hope to get a chance to see you and all your students while you observe. You take care and have a blessed rest of your week.